the way that circadian rhythm interfaces with this story of how mitochondria work is uh, is really interesting and and multifaceted. So one aspect of it actually centers around uh, melatonin. So yeah, actually, you know what? Before I get there, let me explain circadian rhythm. Um, the very quick overview is we've got a central clock in the brain that's primarily responsive to what's called the Zeitgeber, the environmental input of light, right? So um, blue light is this daytime signal. And uh, and obviously it needs to be at the right timing. We wanna get lots of it in the morning and throughout the day, and we want it to turn off in the evening as we're winding down towards bed, mimicking the rise and fall of the sun as much as possible, okay? There, there's a lot to that story of, of light, but we'll keep it there for now. A more recent scientific discovery is that we have tons of peripheral clocks, peripheral circadian clocks in virtually all the tissues of our body from uh, you know our intestines to our liver to our heart to our muscles to our bone to our skin to our hormone producing glands you know they all have these these biological clocks built into them and what we want is to as much as possible synchronize those uh, peripheral clocks with the central clock in the brain and there's a few different ways that that we can do that um in, in as a result of doing that, what do we get, right? Well, the circadian rhythm, both the central clock and the peripheral clocks working together, coordinate all kinds of metabolic functions. There's many different hormones that are directly tied into this circadian system. Um, the most well-known of which is cortisol, but also we have testosterone, growth hormone, melatonin, um, and, and thyroid hormone and many other hormones that are either slightly or very strongly tied into this circadian rhythm. Um, many neurotransmitters are tied in as well, dopamine, serotonin, GABA, orexin, which is a wakefulness neurotransmitter. They're, they're all linked and yoked to this circadian rhythm. Um, there was a wonderful quote that I heard recently uh, from a, a, a British health expert named Phil McCanns. He said, um, talking about these hormonal rhythms that are tied to the circadian rhythm. He said, uh, you know, there's a famous quote that goes like, if you, if you have an orchestra, but, but um, no conductor, you have noise. If you have an orchestra with a conductor, you have music. So this is an important yeah. distinction because um, it is possible to measure your hormones and let's say have a particular amount of a hormone that is within normal range, not necessarily high or low, abnormally so, um, but that doesn't speak to hormonal rhythms. These hormones need to be tied to one another and, and be organized in, in a, as a form of a symphony, as a form of a music where they're all working uh, together in the right patterns and rhythms. And that is largely a function of the health of our circadian rhythm. Um, I'll mention one other aspect of this, which is that there's a few different ways that the circadian rhythm also ties into mitochondria directly. Um, one of which is melatonin. And the melatonin story is really interesting because people have known about melatonin for a long time, but it's always been talked about as like a sleep hormone or a sleep mm -hmm. supplement. Some people don't even know it's a hormone produced endogenously yeah. in our body. It's like, oh yeah, I take melatonin to sleep at night, right? Well, it's a hormone produced by your body. It's produced in the brain. It's produced in the gut. More recently, it's been discovered that it's actually produced by mitochondria at the cellular level as well. They've, they've done experiments um, where they remove the pineal gland from rats mm. And they find that levels of mitochondrial melatonin in the cells of the body, like muscle tissue, for example, remain the same, even if you remove the, the pineal gland. Wow, really interesting. So, I didn't know the mitochondria are producing their own melatonin. I know melatonin acts as a powerful antioxidant that can pass through the double membrane in the mitochondria, but I didn't know they were producing it in the muscles themselves. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So I'm, I, I'm, to some extent, I'm jumping ahead of myself a little there, yeah. but the, the next layer to the story of, you know, being more than a sleep hormone is, as you said, it turns out me a melatonin is actually the most potent mitochondrial antioxidant ever discovered. And our, our cells, our mitochondria need to be bathed in melatonin every night. Um, while we're sleeping. And what does that melatonin do? Well, it, it stabilizes mitochondrial membranes 
and um, and redox potential across that membrane. This is like the electrical charge around the membranes that which is critically important for basically allowing them to produce energy effectively. Um, but in addition to acting as a direct antioxidant, perhaps more importantly, what it does is it interacts with our endogenous antioxidant system, um, something called the ARE, the antioxidant response element, and it recharges levels of glutathione and catalase and superoxide dismutase in this, again, this, this internal antioxidant and detoxification system that is designed to protect our cells, protect our mitochondria against a broad range of stressors every day. So in other words, having adequate levels of melatonin bathing your mitochondria each night while you sleep is critical for the next day, yeah. your, your cells and mitochondria's ability to defend against all of the threats they're going to be and stressors that they're going to be exposed to to prevent oxidative damage and to detoxify the, the, the toxins. So now given that we understand that, that melatonin is playing this critical role in helping to protect our, our mitochondria and recharge the ARE, you know, how does, how does, you know, what, what's the bottom line as far as melatonin? Well, let me give you one data point to plug into this. It's been shown that just being under standard room lighting in your home at night suppresses melatonin levels by upwards of 70%. Mm. Okay, so this is not a small effect. This isn't like a 5%, 10% suppression effect. Most people are wiping out more than half of the melatonin that should be there every night. Um, which is this critically important, it's mitochondrial protective, neuroprotective and anti-cancer hormone that should be bathing the, those mitochondria. So um, yeah, that's that's one of many critical mechanisms of how the circadian rhythm ties into it. But also these hormones are very important to the energy story as well, the thyroid hormone, um, insulin levels and, and blood sugar regulation, which is something we can talk about. Um, testosterone, of course, growth hormone, all of these um, and cortisol, all of these are linked to the circadian rhythm as well. They all play a role in the energy story. 